Welcome back to Morning Live. Now, Hosea Rampegua is an inspirational speaker, coach, and an author of a book titled Gifted, Hunted, and Haunted that he released in 2013. He's now back with his second motivational offering titled Wait to be Seated. And in this book, he puts a spotlight on relationship dynamics and how they've been redefined. Hosea joins us now in studio to help us unpack this read. Hosea, thank you very much for joining us. Hi, Tabula. It's a great pleasure to be on your show. Now, your latest offering starts with a warning. Firstly, tell us what that warning is and why you put it in there. Well, uh, basically the warning is, is to let people know that the book is not really for the faint-hearted. So whoever has or may have had hearts for me may not really handle some of the things in the book. Now, the open letter that you wrote is something that I found interesting, uh, the open wounds. Give us the crux of that. Uh, basically, if you, you check the dynamics of relationships, uh, men have been at fault most of the time whereby we inflict harm on women. So as a result, I thought that uh, for my own crimes and the crimes of my fellow brothers, I should come out there and uh, write that open letter and apologize. It. And can you believe so many people have contacted me telling me that the letter has really helped them? you know, to sort of uh, deal with some of their issues. So, and I think uh, it bodes very well. I think what I like about it is that you've got a man who's having an honest conversation about the things that men do to women, you know, the not so good things that men do to women in relationships. How did you balance the dynamics in terms of telling the story of men, but also making sure that a woman can still read the book and find it useful? Yeah, basically, as, as I said, that r relationships are very interesting and very complex because uh, either somebody watching at home, it's either they are in a relationship or they want to be in a relationship or they want to be out of a relationship. So as a result, I, I, I came out and spoke about my own wounds and my own experiences, the, the triumphs and the trials of relationships that I went through. And uh, as a result, that's why I brought the balance because you watch the news, you hear of femicide, somebody kills a woman whom they claim to have been in love with and uh, that's not okay so as a result for other people we said how do you deal with the heartbreak for instance you know so those are some of the things that are in the book at the same time someone would come and say I mean you're relatively young um, how much experience have you had in love and relationships to be able to pin down a book about relationships well, uh, as, as young as I am, I've been, I've been around the world so, and uh, I've fallen in love. I don't know about you, but if, if ever you've been in love before, guess what? Actually, what inspired my book was a heartbreak because I was out in the eastern part of Johannesburg, you know, talking about my, my, my first book. And guess what? I look down the road, there's this drop-dead gorgeous lady, and I'm like, I flipped the script. Then I changed my talk because I wanted to impress her. Then impressed she was, a couple of days later I get a number and then we go on, on dates. One day her lips rest on mine and gives me a new identity. I was no longer a horse, but I was honey. And guess what? One day she gives me a call, she says, we need to talk. And guess what happens at the end of the we need to talk uh, phone call? It was in the words of Langston Hughes, the dream deferred. I got dumped. Oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. Let's look at some of, you know, the terms that you use within the book. We know the hashtag men are trash has been prevalent for quite some time now. What's your take on the use of that hashtag? Well, uh, it's to some extent when you look at the horrific things that men do is justified, but also there's a need for balance. You know, not all men are trash because what we need to say is that uh, society is messed up and men are messed up. So because, can you believe Tabile in South Africa, 68% of households are led by women. And that means men have ran away and some men died and all that. So men are endangered species. But because of so many pressures from society and so on, men don't know how to really handle themselves. And they also don't know how to handle uh, the pressures such as uh, being heartbroken and all that. That's why somebody turns a gun on somebody for leaving them. So there's a lot because, because I think we need to move to actually from it being just a hashtag to it being a conversation that will bring about uh, solutions and make sure that uh, our society becomes great. And I think it's great that the conversation should be led by men because men in themselves are the ones, you know, um, that are abusing women. Um, not to say that, you know, there aren't instances of women who abuse their partners, but in terms of predominance, um, you've got men who abuse women. Just finally, I think there's always a notion 
um, you know, that the new age man or, or the current man is not adapting to the new age women. And that's what's leading to all of this. Would you say that's an accurate statement? Yeah, t partly right, because the biggest thing that we need to deal with men is identity. What makes a man? Is it because you went to the mountain and got cut? Or what makes a man? Is it the car you drive? Or is it the number of women that you take to bed and all that? So we need to say, what is the essence of a man besides his material accumulations? So once we deal with a man to say, your identity is a man, you are unique, you are the way that you are, and you are cool the way you are. Besides, you don't need other materialistic things to make you cool. So finding yourself, knowing yourself as a man. So by knowing yourself, you know who you are and you know who you are and you know who you are not. Look, Osea, this is an amazing book and it's great that men are finally taking a stand and starting the conversation. It'll be interesting uh, to hear more from you. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure, man. That was inspirational speaker and coach as well as author Hosea Rampegwa and he was talking to us about his latest book titled Wait to be Seated, a read that explores and redefines the dynamics of love and relationships. We're back with more after the break.